vectors, leaving search higher level physics. Vectors is a subject for higher level students only. Vectors and scalars. A scalar quantity is one which has magnitude or size only. And examples of scalars are length, area, energy, time, volume and temperature. A vector quantity is one which has both magnitude and also direction. And examples of these are displacement, where you can say in which direction the displacement takes place. Acceleration could be up, down, forward, backwards or specific directions. Force, um, others include velocity, etc. Vectors can be represented on a diagram by an arrow where the vector is in the same direction as the quantity it is representing and the length of the arrow indicates the magnitude or the size of the vector. Collinear vectors. The word collinear means of the same line. So in this case we're going to look at two vectors which are in line with each other. Um, and I'm going to use an example um, of a sailboat that has been carried by an ocean current and is also being pushed along by a wind in the same direction. Okay, so let's say the ocean current applies a force of 3 newtons on the boat and the wind applies a force of 2 newtons on the boat. In this case we get a combined effect that is stronger, is a stronger force on the boat and it will equal 5 newtons in the same direction. So when you get collinear vectors pointing in the same direction, you can add them end to end and add the numbers as you would arithmetically. 3 plus 2 equals 5. Now let's look at the case when perhaps the wind is blowing in the opposite direction to the current flow. Okay, so we have three newtons from left to right and we have two newtons from right to left and the way we do that mathematically is we would assign um, positive to one direction. So let's say uh, the ocean current applies a force of plus three newtons to the boat. Well then the wind in the opposite direction would be applying a force of minus two newtons two newtons on the boat and again we'll add them algebraically or arithmetically and we get a smaller force, a smaller net force of plus one newton from left to right because the three is bigger than the two. And so what would happen there is the boat would be accelerating from left to right but at a much um, smaller rate as the case above. Alright, now let's consider the case if the ocean current was going against the boat um, with a force of 3 newtons and the wind was blowing with a force of 2 newtons from left to right. So if we take again uh, signs to denote direction, let's give the ocean current working against the boat minus 3 newtons and the wind going from left to right there plus two newtons, well then the ocean current winds out and the boat would be drifting backwards. Okay, um, and that force of minus one newton would result in a an acceleration backwards. So for collinear vectors you can just add and subtract them. Now let's stay with the idea of the boat and we're going to look at perpendicular vectors. Um, and I'm going to use the compass directions west, east, east north and south as ref references. So let's say we have an ocean current going from west to east with a force of 3 newtons. And we'll have the uh, wind blowing from south to north. Um, with a force of 2 newtons. So clearly the boat is not going to go 
um, exactly from west to east or north to south. It's going to go somewhere in between. Okay, and we want to find the resultant force. So when you combine these two forces, what is the result? And it's called the resultant force. Now it's going to look something like that. Okay, and uh, how do we arrive at, number one, the uh, strength of that force? Okay, or the magnitude of that force? And also we need to figure out the direction of that force. Okay, so how would we go about that? Well, let's fill in uh, the rectangular shape here. And basically, the direction and length of that black arrow we can get um, using our Pythagoras theorem and uh, using a little bit of trigonometry. Okay, so Pythagoras theorem use, is used for right angle triangles. All right, and here we have a right angle triangle which has base of three newtons and size of two newtons. And we need to find out what's the strength of this force here, F. So we'll say that F squared is equal to three squared plus two squared. I'm going to continue to the right hand side to save space. So we'll get nine plus four, which is 13. That's F squared. So F will be equal to the square root of 13 and we get our F equals uh, 3.6 newtons. Alright, so it's bigger than either of them but not as big as, as 5 newtons if they were pointing the same direction. Now that is the next um, question direction. So we need to consider what is this angle here? I'm going to mark it theta and this is where we go back to trigonometry and we've got a right angle triangle so we can use one of our three ratios tan of an angle, uh, sine of an angle or cosine of an angle whichever one is most convenient for us. Uh, tan if you recall is opposite over adjacent sine is opposite over hypotenuse and cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, so looking here, opposite angle theta is 2 newtons, so that's opposite there. And adjacent to angle theta is 3 newtons, so that's opposite and adjacent. We can say that tan theta is equal to 2 over 3 and to find my angle theta I will use the tan inverse function on the calculator, so shift and the tan button and of 2 over 3 and I will get 33.7 degrees, that's rounding to one, one decimal place. Okay, so what will I say is the resultant force? Um, I'll say it's 3.6 newtons and it is east 33.7 degrees north. Now what about other combinations of vectors, ones that are not in line or perpendicular? So let's take the example here. We've got the wind um, blowing at an angle, so not horizontal or vertical. Let's just for the sake of this example say that the wind is blowing, let me just change my pen to white, the wind is blowing at an angle that's 15 degrees to the vertical, okay? And we have to combine that with a force of 3 newtons from a current and let's say for the, this example that that, uh, that current, 3 newtons, is um, at an angle of 10 degrees from the horizontal. Okay, so how can we combine these? And we can use something called the triangle law. If we lay the vectors head to tail, so one following on from another, like so, then the resultant vector, so when we 
put their them together will be the third side of the triangle so that black arrow there will represents the resultant of the 3 newton and the 2 newton now how to calculate this well if you know two sides of a triangle um, and one of the angles we can use uh, from trigonometry the cosine rule okay now firstly we have to figure out well what is uh, the angle here we're trying to find this side here the black arrow so it would be helpful to know the opposite angle now we can figure that out uh, remember that the two newtons is 15 degrees to the vertical and that the three newtons was 10 degrees to the horizontal so that's 10 and 15 and in between here we would have 90 degrees so all together those three angles would give me 115 degrees okay so now we're going to use the cosine rule to find the length of the black arrow cosine rule is a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a now let's use our values here uh, we'll call our unknown side a so a squared will be equal to uh, 3 squared plus 2 squared minus twice 3 times 2 times cosine 115 degrees. So let's calculate that. So for a squared, I got a value of 15.54. Okay, and so to calculate a, then we'll get the square root of that. 15.54 and I got 3.94 okay so that's the third side of the triangle the black um, arrow there and I'll say that the resultant force let's call it FR is equal to 3.94 newtons okay and that's a reasonable answer given that you're um, adding 3 newtons and 2 newtons but they're at an angle to each other so we should get um, more than either but less than both and as for direction I'm not going to go into it now because as we go on we see there's there's actually a better method of calculating the resultant uh, which will lead easily to the direction um, if you did want to find direction you'd continue with your trigonometry you'd find the measure of the angle that I'm calling x here and you would add it to the 10 degrees um, here to the horizontal now so another um, way of looking at vectors adding two well let's take the same two vectors and um, adding them together graphically is to use what's known as the parallelogram law so by drawing or firstly the, the two newtons and the three newtons are starting from the same point now by completing a parallelogram and drawing lines that are parallel to the three newton and the two newton um, then their resultant will be the diagonal of the parallelogram there you go and actually what you get here is the exact same triangle um, as the triangle law and you're still you're looking for this missing side here the black arrow and as we saw in the previous slide you get a resultant force of magnitude 3.94 newtons okay again for direction you'd have to go to your trigonometry but don't do that just yet because we're going to look at an alternative way of adding uh, vectors so now we're going to look at um, how to go about adding three or more vectors so up to now we're just looking at two okay so if you have three or more the way you would approach it is to first combine any two vectors so choose the easiest and the most convenient so if you see some vectors that are perpendicular or in line they would be the easiest ones to to um, add together first and then you'll have one less vector to combine and you would continue in this manner until all the vectors are combined and the single answer at the end is the resultant of all vectors
Uh, let's try that. So look at this diagram here. We have uh, three vectors and we're asked to calculate the resultant force. So we have uh, three newtons west, three newtons south. We have seven newtons at 45 degrees. So basically halfway between north and east. So clearly the easiest two to combine would be the three newtons and the three newtons because they are perpendicular to each other. Okay. So, and the easiest way to find their resultant is to use the parallelogram law. Okay. And we're going to be looking for the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle here. Okay. So where the sides are three newtons and three newtons. Let's call this F1. Okay, so F1 squared is equal to 3 squared plus 3 squared. Okay, um, F1 squared then is equal to 9 plus 9, which gives me 18. And F1 would be the square root of 18, which is uh, 4.24 newtons. Okay, so um, that's the magnitude. Now direction is convenient in this question because 3 and 3 will mean that F1 uh, splits that angle evenly into 45 degrees and 45 degrees which means that F1 is collinear or in line with that 7 newtons so therefore we can um, just add or subtract these so they're going in opposite direction all right so we can say that the resultance force FR will be equal to, well, let's say that the 7 newtons is going in the plus direction, say 7. Then your F1 would be going in the negative direction or the opposite direction. So 7 minus 4.24. And we will get an answer of 2.76 newtons. And the direction would be exactly northeast because it's 45 degrees it's halfway between uh, both of them 2.76 newtons northeast now to do more complex um, combinations uh, we have to employ a method called resolving vectors in which we take a vector at an angle and we break it up into its horizontal component and its vertical component. So let's just take any old force F in this direction. Okay, at some angle theta to the horizontal. And we're going to break um, this force into a horizontal component. So really we're doing the opposite to combining vectors. So we want this X component, the horizontal component and the y component or the vertical component together they give you that force f okay so what are x and y so again we have to go to trigonometry now we've a right angle triangle here and we've got our angle theta well let's write down some of the trigonometric ratios so cosine theta we know we can get by putting adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, that's in a right angle triangle. Okay, and in this triangle, adjacent to theta is the side x and the hypotenuse is f. Okay, and what we can take from that is that the x component is equal to f times cosine theta. All right. Similarly, if we go for sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse, we'd be using y over f. And that gives me the y component. It measures f times sine theta. 
Okay. Now if you remember the value of cosine and sine are always less than 1. So if you multiply them by f, x and y are always smaller than the resultant f. Okay. Now let's see how we might use that in the next example. So x is f cosine theta and y is f sine theta. Now let's look at this example. So it looks like the previous one, except there's one important difference. Uh, here we've got 12 newtons and 15 newtons. They're not equal. So yes, we could employ the parallelogram law and we get the resultant here. Uh, but the angles, the resultant vector there, it would not be collinear, it would not be in line with the 20 degrees. Okay, uh, so we're not going to take um, that approach. Okay, let's go again. What I'm going to do instead, because 12 newtons is exactly horizontal and 15 newtons is exactly vertical, I'm going to instead focus on the 20 newton force and I'm going to um, resolve that into its x component, its horizontal, and its y component, or its vertical component. And then I can put the x bit with the 12 newtons, and I can put the y bit against the 15 newtons and see what uh, comes out. Okay, so let's look for the x component of the 20 newton force. All right, and we learned that x equals f cosine theta. So in this case, x equals the force was 20 newtons multiplied by the cosine of 45 degrees. And we get an x component of 14.14 newtons. Okay, and we'll do the same with the y component. y is equal to f sine theta. And so y is equal to 20 sine 45 degrees, which is the same. So 14.14 newtons. Okay, so what's the next step? Well, the next step is to look at the horizontal. Okay, if we take to the right or to the east to be positive, then to the west will be negative and our total horizontal forces will be 14.14 uh, newtons to the right so that's my x 14.14 minus uh, 12 newtons okay and I get 2.14 newtons okay and if we do the same with the vertical um, if we take up to be north, that's plus, and south to be negative, I'll have 14.14 uh, minus 15 newtons, which gives me uh, minus 0 0.86 newtons. Okay, so what does my resultant force of all three vectors look like? So if I do it roughly on this graph uh, to the right here, uh, let me do it in a different colour so we can see it more clearly. So it is a little bit to the right and horizontal. Okay, let's say that that there is 2.14. Okay, and it is a tiny bit down as minus 0 0.96 or 86. So it's a very small force here. Okay, if you can see that. All right, and what about direction? So here we'll have to, uh, we can see it's, it's very small. Uh, we need to find its magnitude and direction. So I'm going to draw uh, a magnified version of that. So 2.14 uh, to the east and 0 0.86 to the south and their resultant will be here. Let's, okay, let me 
make that heavier to emphasize that. Okay, so that will be my resultant force. And I will use this right angle triangle first to calculate its magnitude. So we're going to use Pythagoras to do that. And uh, let's call this F or the resultant force. So F or squared would be equal to 2.14 squared plus 0 0.86 squared. Okay, so let's calculate that quickly. which is 5.313192 and the square root of that will give me the magnitude. Okay, square root, the answer of that and I get 2.3 newtons. Alright, that's my resultant force. Now I have to use the same triangle to figure out my theta. Okay, my angle, let me just highlight that there in a different, we'll do this in a different colour again. So theta, what's the what's the angle? We'll do that in blue. What's the angle? Well, we've got lots of information there. We can use any of our three um, three ratios from trigonometry. Uh, let's use tan. So uh, the ang angle will be equal to tan inverse of opposite over adjacent. So opposite theta is zero point eight six and adjacent to theta is 2.14. So let's do that quickly um, on my calculator. 0 0.86 over 2.14 and I get uh, 21, 21 21.9 degrees. Okay, so I have my magnitude and my direction would be east so that means now we have a demonstration to physically show how two forces can add together and then we're going to follow up mathematically to show the resultant of the two forces. For this demonstration you need uh, three newton balances or newton meters as they're called or sometimes spring balances. You need retort stands or clamps something to hold them in place you need some string, uh, paper underneath to record, a pencil and a ruler to mark the directions and a protractor to measure the angles involved. So what's happening here is we have um, a piece of string that's connected to the Newton balances as shown. I'll just get my pen here. Um, and the there are three pieces of string and they're not together at the centre here. And um, because that knot is not moving, it means that the net force on it is zero. And what we're hoping to demonstrate is that force one, sorry, force one here, um, which is pulling on the st string in this direction, when we add it to force two here, uh, should be equal and opposite to force 3. Okay, uh, we can measure the magnitude of the forces from the Newton balances and to mathematically add the forces we're going to record the angles between the strings, so the angle here. So the first task is to record and note the three forces. So F1, the force 1, sorry I'll change the color of that pen. Force 1 is equal to 3.3 newtons. Force 2 was found to be 2.6 newtons. And force 3 was found to be 4.9 newtons. Okay. So what did my results look like? So using the pen or pencil and ruler to trace uh, the direction of the strings and uh, this is what I got and we've noted the forces there uh, force 1 being 3.3, force 2 being 2.6 and force 3 being 4.9. Um, I haven't drawn the arrows to scale just yet to show the magnitude of the forces. Uh, we're just interested right now in direction. 
Uh, the next step then is to measure the angles, firstly between F1 and F2, um, but then on relative to the horizontal, which will be take to be in the direction of the 4.9. So this is really small now. It was 55 degrees between F, F1 and F2, um, but um, continuing the arrow from F3, we'll take that to be our horizontal. And um, this angle here, it's written very small, was found to be 30 degrees. And underneath we found uh, 25 degrees. So we'll use that in the calculations on the next slide. So first I'm going to start by sketching the scenario. Okay, so we have our F3, that's 4.9 Newtons. Uh, F2, so we put our knot here. Okay, F2 uh, was at an angle of 30 degrees. Now this is just a sketch, so not to scale. And F2 was 2.9 Newtons. And then the first force, F1, is at a slightly smaller angle, uh, 25 degrees. And we'll draw this one a little longer because it the force was greater. It was 3.3 Newtons. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to um, resolve those forces into their horizontal and vertical components. Okay, so let's look at uh, the 2.9, for example, its horizontal component. We'll call that X. Uh, it goes backwards this direction. Okay, and that distance and then its vertical component is there. Okay, likewise for, let me choose a different colour, for the 3.3 .3 Newtons, uh, we'll choose white perhaps. Okay, um, it goes from right to left in the X direction, that distance, and then vertically it goes down. Okay, so we're going to calculate those, we're going to add them up and hopefully we see that they are equal and opposite to F3. Okay, um, I'll just go to white then for computing. Okay, so let's take F1, which was the 3.3 .3 Newtons. So its X component will be given by 3.3 um, cosine 25 degrees. Okay, so the cosine gives the x component and we find that x is equal to 2.99 newtons when you compute that. Its y component is gotten by 3.3 .3 sine 25 degrees and we get for that 1.39 newtons. Now because that uh, vertical component for F1 is pointing downwards, I'm going to give that a minus. Okay, so that's our first force. Let's look at F2, the second force, and we'll repeat that process. So its X component will be 2.6 cosine 30 degrees, and we get uh, 2.25 Newtons. For that, its Y component is 2.6 times sine 30 degrees and we're going to get 1.3 newtons and because that's pointing up that is positive. Okay, so next we're going to put them together. Okay, so F1 plus F2. So we look at the horizontal and the vertical separately. Let's look at the x values. So for F1 it was 2.99 and it's pointing from right to left, same as F2. So we will add that to 2.25 and we get a value of 5.24 Newtons. 
okay and with the y's or the vertical components we have a minus 1.39 plus a 1.3 we get a minus 0 0.09 newtons okay so what does that mean it means that well we need to compare it to the third force f3 okay compared to f3 all right so f3 has an x component of 4.9 newtons it points from left to right on the horizontal and it has a y component of 0 newtons so have we shown that the resultant of f1 plus f2 is equal to f3 well the answer is within reason okay um, so within reason is 5.24 the same as 4.9 newtons it depends on the error involved and the y uh, component 0 0.09 downwards is not too far away from 0 newtons so I'd say within reason we have shown it uh, there are many possible errors uh, firstly the Newton balances were not very precise at all at all um, they only measure 0.2 newtons um, if we use digital ones the experiment would be far better um, also there's error of parallax when uh, projecting the position of the string down onto the page and also in measuring okay the here's angles. an exam question um, that puts into practice uh, that work on vectors okay so let's read first a golfer pulls his trolley and a bag along a level path he applies a force of 277 newtons at an angle of 24.53 degrees to the horizontal the weight of the trolley and the bag together is 115 newtons and the force of friction is 252 newtons calculate the net force acting on the trolley and the bag okay so for nine marks so the first thing I would always do is to draw a diagram uh, it can be very simple uh, let's place our golf bag and trolley at the center just with a dot and let's sketch the forces acting upon it so the golfer is pulling the bag forward along a level path okay so this is just to place my horizontal and he is pulling it with a force of 277 newtons at an angle of 24.53 to the horizontal okay the other forces acting upon it are its weight so weight is always straight down that is 115 newtons now because it's down I'm going to give that a negative sign just for now and the force of friction acting on the bag so will be opposing forward motion so it will be going backwards and that is 252 newtons because it's going backwards I'm going to give that a negative as well okay so to calculate the net force acting on the trolley what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the um, horizontal and the vertical components of the 277 newtons so we're going to find the x component here of the 277 and the y component of the 277 and then we can add them together with the other um, forces okay so the x component will be got by uh, 277 cosine 24.53 degrees and when you calculate that what you get is 252 newtons okay and the y component is 277 sine 24.53 degrees and that turns out to be 115 newtons okay and these would both be positive they're going in the positive directions so to get your net forces your net horizontal force we we'll call it net x will be the friction minus 252 plus the x which is plus 252 which is zero newtons 
and the net y will be the weight minus 115 plus the upward y component which is plus 115 which also gives you 0 newtons so we can say the net force equals 0 newtons. Okay, so that's for nine marks. And what does the net force tell you about the golfer's motion? Now we're told he's pulling it, which means he's moving. But if the net force is zero, it means there is no acceleration and he is moving with constant velocity. Okay, if there's no force, there's no acceleration. Okay, thanks for listening.